Hi, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna, and today we are doing a different rug making project than we've ever done before, and probably one of many of a series, because uh, we have thus far neglected the craft of latch hook. It is very different um, and viewed differently by rug makers, of course. Latch hook is using a different hook, and we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. But I want to promote it as a craft for a lot of reasons. One is that it is so good for your body, for your wrists to alternate between different things like punch and hooking. Latch hook is something different yet again. And trying to get uh, children and different people involved in the craft of any rug making means that we should incorporate something that has been around um, for decades and is enjoyed by a lot of people. So I'm not diminishing this craft. I want to acknowledge it as um, something that we can practice and make better. I feel like the old latch hooking kits from the 70s that I grew up with are really limited, and particularly the, the nature of the kits are often corny. So what I'm going to do in this video is I've already designed a very simple design that I'm going to latch. And with a high pile, it's going to look different than any rugs that we've done together before. But it is, again, something different to try, something to think about. I'm going to be using a higher quality of materials. I've, I've got my wools out. I have a lot of extra stuff that I've dyed and played with, and I'm going to use better materials to make what I think will become a better looking rug and create different possibilities for a craft that I think is sometimes pigeonholed as a kid's craft or a very lowbrow craft. I think the product that we're going to end up here with this project is going to make you think twice about the possibilities of, of trying latch hook. So what I've got going here, again, the main thing that I want to do is design my own latch hook. So I love my design and I'm using yarns that I mean to use and want to use for this project. So I started with this Halloween picture, which is a very simple, one of my primitive things. I didn't even dip, use a whole piece of paper. Changed my mind about the border, but it's a real simple design of a pumpkin face that's set into a, the top of a kind of a tombstone, and he's got wings, and the background is just sky. I decided to take out the borders. So the materials I'm working with here are the drawing I drew and the yarn that I chose so if you want to come closer in, I chose three different oranges for interest in the jack-o'-lantern face, and I chose plain black for the eyeballs and the nose. I've got some white for the teeth that I might make a little bit darker. I've got this mix color that I just have had for years and I've never used. It's a mixture of purples, grays, greens, sage, grape, straw, and this is going to be the tombstone color. So using a multi like this is going to create a lot of interest on that part. I'm creating layers behind the pumpkin face to make it more interesting. And I'm also going to use this amazing multi. This is from Della Ackles. I ordered this from Canada. Um, beautiful yarn. I'll put her link into this video. I'm going to use this for the wings. Unexpected, but I don't want to do white wings. I want to keep it jumping. And then I'm going to use this blue that didn't come out quite right for Jocelyn's project, mixed cobalt, as a night sky. So these are the colors that I'm using. And consequently, my other supplies, I chose paints because I'm going to paint my backing that are similar colors. So I'm going to pull out my oranges that are quite similar to the oranges I'm using my yarns. I'm going to pull out, I don't know if I need that teal, I'm going to pull out the gray which is going to translate as the mixed gray for the tombstone and I know what it is. Uh, if I was doing this pattern commercially I would make it a bit more obvious but I know that the gray is the mix. I'm going to pull out the black for the eyeballs. I'm not going to use white unless I make a mistake because the thing is already white. And what am I missing? Oh, the real mix. So I'll probably pull out two colors like this for the real mix. Maybe three and do some dashes and slashes of color on that so that I know that I mean this. So I've got my paints out. I've got a paintbrush. Oh, the bright blue for the sky. I've got my paintbrushes out. Any old paintbrushes. Don't get, you know, Winsor & Newton's top of the whatever. Get the ones from the craft aisle, Michael's or Joann's this is going to come in real handy it's just a piece of like plexiglass from a picture from a mm -hmm. picture frame and what i'm going to do with it is i've just got it down over my picture so that when i paint my the net that is the rug backing for latch um i'm not going to paint onto my picture my drawing and ruin it i might want to use that in the future for something else i might want to embroider it uh, embellish it in a different way so i don't want to get that dirty and that's why i'm using this plastic after I paint, I'll be able to wash the plastic and use the plastic again for many other projects. Now, the backing for latch, unlike the backing that we, that we normally use for rug hooking and punch needle, 
uh, monk's cloth, linen, uh, Scottish burlap, rug warp, um, any of those things. This is obviously very different. This has got a huge open gauge and it's very, very, very stiff. So there are pluses and minuses to this. There's not gonna be as dense um, of a pile going on. The design won't be super dense and that's why I drew something very simple. Um, and easy to translate without as much information as you could get hooking or punching. The good thing about this is that this kind of backing is very, very stiff and it's not going to unravel. So I'm not particularly worried about the edges. I can cut it where I want it. And in this case, if you can see, I'm gonna cut it right over the picture where the picture is gonna end. So I think I'm gonna cut it right here just so I have enough to fold back. Now, if you've seen people doing latch, you might have noticed that they are taping the edges up. They're not taping the edges up because they're afraid it's going to unravel. They're taping the edges up because it's real stiff. And if it pokes you 120 times, um, it's going to start to hurt and irritate you. So just get, get rid of that by taping up the edges if that's a thing. Um, regular, you can get this latch backing with no pattern, no kitty cats, no, you know, crazy corny pictures, just plain backing and do this with it. So I'm literally laying my backing over my drawing and I'm gonna take out my supplies here. I'm not gonna do all of this with you and bore you to tears, but I'm gonna bring out my oranges and these have been in the attic and it's been what, 145 degrees so far all summer. So let's see if they even work. These kinds of paints, I've got the folk art ones, but I've also got the Apple Barrel and I've got Craft Smart. These are at Michaels and Joann's, typically for under a dollar each. You don't need every single color, you just need the ones that you mean to use. So I'm just centering this and I'm just gonna paint my areas. I can clean it up later. I'm just gonna paint it with the colors and it is pretty dried up. But I mean, obviously the orange is coming out. I'm just giving myself a guide on my backing as to where the colors are gonna go later. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna latch this tonight because this needs to dry uh, just for a few hours, just to be absolutely sure. Otherwise you're gonna have some painty yarn. We're also for this project going to cut our own yarn and of course you can cut it to any height and because we are human people and not machines they're all going to be different heights no matter how hard you try so we're going to come out with a really uneven pile that we will later trim at the end of the latching so for the next probably 15 20 minutes i'm going to be off camera painting in my pumpkin face with his wings and the gravestone so that i end up with a piece of latch that has enough information on it for me to then start using my latch hook and hooking. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we finished painting our piece and you can see that the colors that I have there are real close to the colors that I'm gonna be using for the yarn. So I'm gonna be able to fill it in really easily with this very little bit of information that I have painted on there. Now, it looks like a total pig's breakfast, but when I show it to you, you're going to see it doesn't matter if it looks like a pig's breakfast, number one. And number two, that's enough information for me to fill it in and figure out where the orange goes, where the blue goes, where the gray goes, where the wings are. So I can put that over here for the moment. I can see the teeth, I can see the eyes, I can see all my stuff. And you can see my piece of plexiglass, so my thing is very clean under it. I can use that or adapt that later. And I'm going to bring this inside with some cleaner, and I'm just going to clean this whole thing off and use this again in the future. So a little of it's dried, but it's all gonna come off. And I'll be able to make this clean again and use this again. So doing this very simple process has given me my backing, my custom backing, to use with the yarns that I chose. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna actually do tomorrow, we'll put the whole video together, is I'm gonna cut my yarn and I'm gonna start latching it. We're gonna start this piece. And we're gonna bring it right to the end so you see this as a finished piece and maybe have a new idea or new respect for what latch can be and could be and maybe should be. So it's the next day and I've had a little bit of time to work on the pumpkin face. If we look down here at what I've got, I've started doing a few of the parts so far. I've got our mixed gravestone and the grays, the greens, um, this really, really lush sky uh, made from this wool that I dyed. I, I just did too much blue and I really didn't need it and it's going to make a beautiful sky. So I want to show you some of the aspects of doing this uh, that are going to be important. Now because I'm not using the commercial acrylic yarn that comes in those little round haystack things, 
I'm using my own and it's dyed and fancy and nice. It's different sizes, different weights, different textures. Like the blue is a uh, bulky and the other two are worsted. And to make it even worsted, uh, the black is an acrylic. So this won't matter with this kind of rug making because I'm not gonna be blocking it, which means pressing it with an iron. So I'm not gonna be burning it uh, a synthetic fabric and having that kind of kickback and trouble. So in that way, this is an easier craft. In other ways, it's tougher. And it's a lot of sort of sculpting as you go. And I'm not gonna deal with the overall pile of it until I'm done, the height of it until I'm done. But I'm gonna show you how I've been working on it because it's been super fun. I mean, I haven't put much time into it. We were down at the lake all day uh, with the kids. So this has just been like an afterthought. But Jay made this ingenious card. This is a tool that you're gonna need out of a piece of cardboard. Because it took me a little while to figure out what height I did want the pile at. Because um, again, I can always trim it, but like any anything else, your hair, whatever, you can't, you can't, once it's trimmed, you can't replace it. So you're better off uh, doing it a hair longer and uh, trimming it down later. So when I'm making my pieces, I'm just holding this here, the end, and I'm going around this piece of cardboard, which we already decided was the right length of each um, piece of yarn for me. And then I would just cut it. And then I just come along the top. If you've ever done pom-pom making, you already know about this. This is, this is one of the great hacks. Just trim along here and I'm gonna end up with all pieces all the same uh, height. And even another little hack another one of Jay's brain waves, is to take a little razor or the edge of your scissors and cut down here like this because then your sharp scissors can find the ridge of it and get right under, under the whole sort of nap and cut right through. So this is something you need to figure out on your own, figure out what height is right with you. Just latch a couple, I'll show you latching next, latch a couple of um, strands and see if that seems like the right height to you and definitely err on the cautious side. So I've got my little basket going with my pieces here and I've been cutting as I go because I don't want to cut too, too much. I want to be sure I'm liking the colors and I've already decided against the wing color because I feel it's real dark. So I'm going to show you a few of the things that I think are important in doing this particular craft. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to do it. So it's traditional. This is very dense here, again, because this blue is worsted. Uh, sorry, this blue is bulky. This is worsted, and these are worsted. So the way that this is bulkier, and it is very typical and traditional to, this is the latch hook. You can get this at Joann's for like $4 or something. If you have a kit, they usually come in the kit. It comes with this little toggle thing here. That's the key to this craft. The thing that is the most traditional is to, if you're looking at this like a grid, is to hook the same part of each one. So for me, the top of the square. If I'm looking at each unit as a square, the top of each square. So it's something like the blue that is so thick and full and has a lot of body all on its own. I'm just gonna do, take one of them. I'm gonna wrap it around the guy, right? The toggle is over here. It doesn't matter if it's opened or shut, but if it's shut, you're gonna eventually have to open it. I'm gonna go into the top of his space, okay? I'm going to push through until that toggle comes onto the other side. Do you see how that toggle moved to the other side? I'm just going to put this into the toggle's mouth, close it, and it closes down on itself and pulls through the piece. This piece is giving me a hard time, but it normally goes like butter. So pause. let's do another one. So we just took a quick pause because Jay pointed out it was very hard to see what I was doing. So let's take a better look at that. Again, if I'm looking at each square as the square, as a unit, I'm looking at like north, south, east, and west. And it would that's, be typical to hook, I know, um, that part of each square. And that's what I'm going to be doing right now because the reason I mentioned that is because I'm coming back to it. You're going to want your strand around the neck of the thing and you're going to push your needle through until the toggle gets to the other side of the the ridge that you're working, and you're gonna put both strands into the mouth and pull it through. Let's let's do that again. Mm -hmm. So wrapping it up first, right? Again, it doesn't matter it matter if the toggle is up or down, it will become up eventually. I'm gonna do it here so you can see it again. Coming to the top again, 
pushing this through until the toggle comes through. There's the toggle ready to go. It's like, you know, um, loaded, the trigger loaded, coming through here, and I'm literally bringing it through the mouth of itself. Let's do one more. Wrapping it around. It doesn't have to be a thousand percent even, it doesn't. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter at all. In a hundred years, it certainly doesn't matter at all. And even when this thing is done, if a few of them are short and others are longer, it doesn't matter at all. Okay? So, again, this blue is very thick and has a lot of uh, weight and it has a lot of body. Now, the other fibers that I chose, because I like them for their color and I wanted to have some different looking uh, textures in here, have less weight and they don't have um, the body that I want. So I'm going to leave that one alone. But sticking with the yarn, nobody has the body that they want, right? Not even yarn. But sticking with this, I'm going to show you what you can do when you're working with yarns that are different weights because it will come up as a problem. This, for example, you can see just by looking at the weight of these that the blues are not just a little bit thicker, they are much thicker. So that will come into play. These are going to end up looking very chintzy uh, and skimpy next to them. So what I need to do when I hook a lighter weight yarn alongside a thicker yarn, the best thing I can do is just use two. And you know, these are mul these are multicolor because it's color changing. Just pick two of any because it doesn't it just doesn't matter. So I'm going to take two just random and I'm going to handle it the same way. So I'm going to come over here again where you can see me. This is the tombstone part. And again, I've already got this around my hook, the neck of it, pushing it through until the toggle goes through. And then I'm feeding this to the toggle, which will then gobble it up and pull it through. Now I have four strands here and I'm looking at a comparable weight to my blue. I could do three strands if I wanted to. Now, if you feel like you might have made a mistake and you would like to make things thicker, you can fix that. That's one of the great things about rug making, any kind of rug making, including latch, you can fix that. So one of the things you can do, the reason I kept bringing up each square as a unit with the north, south, east, and west is because in theory, you could hook all four sides. And then that would be four times thicker than if you are only hooking the top, right? You would be hooking the next one, so it would be actually 50% thicker. But you could add weight to the sides. And I'm gonna show you how that can be done doing something like this black eye. Now it looks full and fluffy, but I know that this is worsted acrylic. So I know it's not that thick. So some of it's thick, but it's not going to stand up next to the thickness of the other pieces I'm working on. So if you come in right here with me and we look row by row, this is a technique I can't, I'm looking for a place to add. This is a technique I can't help but think of as checking the dog for ticks. Here we go. And now that I've said that, I've probably spoiled the entire craft for you. So if I pull this apart, you can see I've hooked top to top, but I haven't hooked any of these side things. So if I'm feeling like, oh boy, everything was going well, and now I realize I don't even have any black. Um, now I realize that the eye is not going to be thick enough. What do I do? I start pulling it apart row by row and going, okay, so there are some, there are some rows in here where I haven't hooked the sides. You see the blank strips here. I can go in there now with my black and hook each one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can hook it with one. I can hook it with two. I can hook it with whatever I want and then do this and see, okay, do I have the body in this spot that I was lacking? Does this look the way that I meant for it to look? Because I can add, I can add easily. So I wouldn't want to do that technique on every single square unit because it's gonna take twice as long if you do the sides and the top and the bottom on each one. It makes way more sense for you to just take two at once. And yeah, they are not hitting the sides, but the two are so uh, thick, twice as thick, so 100% thicker, um, that it's not gonna make any difference. Sitting side by side, when you have this kind of volume going, hooking two together is fantastic and enough. The only time you would use this looking for ticks in the dog technique, row to row, is if you'd already hooked it and you were thinking, yeah, no, this isn't, this isn't right. It's not enough. I screwed up with weight. I, I, um, I messed this up. 
you haven't messed it up. As long as there's still spots that you can hook, you can fix it. So you just go back in and you fix the parts that you feel look skimpy comparatively looking at the rest of it. So this is a super easy craft and um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like a lowbrow craft and I don't want to make myself sound like a highbrow person. I think this is different and it's fun. And for people who, again, have children or grandchildren who might want to do this, this is a good beginning thing to do. Even if you have somebody in your life who is looking for a craft but is a bit overwhelmed by the equipment of hooking or punch needle or Russian punch or any of those, you know, just the idea of doing what we did here, making a custom canvas of something that's special to that person, a pet, a house, um, some funny thing that is, you know, a family story, painting a canvas so simply with one dollar paints the way we did, and then finding yarn. It doesn't have to be this hand dyed yarn. Um, it can be any yarn. It could be the stuff on the discount aisle at Michael's or Joann's, and putting something together that's special as a gift with the holidays coming up um, is also a really fun thing. I did try, because I went off those pumpkin angel wings, I, I saw this just sitting on the table. I thought, oh, let me try to hook some twine as the wings and make it like a crappy homespun looking pumpkin. And that didn't work because it was too thick. But it, it might work if you had thinner twine. I've never seen anybody latch with twine. If you had this more stringy twine, that could be a really cool brown bag burlapy look too. You could use sari ribbons, S-A-R-I, um, to latch as well. There's there's really nothing that you can't use. So I'm going to continue on. This is probably going to be a couple days here and there that I work on this until I finish it. And I will show you the finished piece in this video. But we have thus far really covered all the techniques. There's not a lot to do. Let's close this segment with one more hook. And I'm going to come back to the blue with you. And again, I'm just folding it over here 50-50 by sight. doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going under one of the ridges. I'm pushing until the toggle is through, and then I'm feeding both strands to the toggle until it closes, pulling it up on itself. And it makes a loop that locks. If you're wondering, doesn't it come undone immediately? No, it doesn't. It definitely doesn't. And certainly the pressure um, of the other ones all around it as it grows holds it in place. There's no issue with that. But with this, you just pull, 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 tug a little bit if you feel like it's loose. And, you know, you can see what you're doing on the back, too. It's a very fun craft. It's very easy, very fun. So I will come back to you hopefully sooner rather than later with this finished so you can see what the end product looks like. All right, so I've been working on this rug for a little while. It's a new day. Um, it's, this has been super fun, I have to say. This has been more fun than I thought it would be. And I'm at the point now where... It's, we've got jack-o'-lantern here. I've started to shape one eye. The second eye I haven't shaped at all yet. And the thing that I feel is really working about this rug, and I'm calling, I'm calling this style of rug champagne latch, because it's not latch hook. It's like the, the top of the line, primo, gorgeous, you know, champagne-y latch hook. It's not the cat with the ball. So the thing that makes this, I think, pop and special is the, what's called the fancy fiber, so all the non-traditional yarns. So I started with these that you saw when I was painting and cutting, um, and then I went into my drawers and I found a ton of the Sari, S-A-R-I, ribbons, which I've been using like crazy. I found these kinds of things. This is just Lion brand, uh, Moonlight or Twilight or something like that. And then some old, old mohair, like that I found at a thrift store. This one too more old mohair. I think this might be the stuff that you use to make scrubbies, like for the sink. I'm not sure, but I have it, and I've been using it all. And I, what I was doing was, as I was layering in color, my sky was so nice and lush and thick, and I was real happy with the way that came out. But I was less happy as I went along with the way the pumpkin came out. And this is proper wool. I mean, this is like um, worsted slash bulky wool that I hand dyed. It's a nice quality wool. There's nothing wrong with it. But when it was in there next to the fancy blue sky, it wasn't doing much for me. So I started to add in loops. I think I used up all my loops for now, but these little yellow loops, I started to add in. And as I go, I kind of cut them down, cut them back, level them off. I haven't done it yet for this part of the pumpkin. I did a little bit over here, cleaning them up bit by bit. But I added these yellow loops because I think they really add interest to the orange pumpkin. 
in the gravestone area that I'm only halfway done, um, you know, I have this one, which also, I think this is a hand dyed one that I did. And I love the colors and I love it, but it looked flat next to everything else. So I happened to find in one of my drawers this one, this gray yarn, and it had a little bit of this purple in it, a little bit of sparkle. So every time I was putting in a strand of this, I added a couple strands of this too. And you can see it's not a lot, but it's enough to pop this part from being just straight, you know, cottony wooly looking to being a little bit more like this and like this. So I took it a step further too, and I decided, you know, I had the multicolored wing that we painted with that other yarn that I love, and I, I just don't want to use it in this. I feel I have another vision for it. So I left that out, and I also feel it was too monochromatic with more blue in this composition. So I found these, and I started using these for the wings. And at the top of the wings, I started adding my sari pieces that I cut exactly the same way and I hook exactly the same way. I found all these on Ravelry. I've said before, if you check on Ravelry.com, the stash, uh, stash, S-T-A-S-H, search page, and you type in sari, S-A-R-I, also Etsy sells them new. People often sell a bunch of these, you know, all of these were one lot for me that somebody sold me for like $10 for tons of it. And it really, I don't add it all over the place, but I add it here and there, and it adds a lot. So the difference between doing this kind of latch, where you design your own pattern and you sort of um, forage for your fancy fibers, you look for different kinds of things to use, this is bringing latch to a different level. And it becomes almost sculptural at this point. And unlike hooking, it's so it's so similar and it's so different. I'm still I still have a hook in my hand all the time and I'm working piece by piece, uh, I'm changing colors, I'm fooling as I go, but the thing that is very different about it, and I just did a video a few days ago about that Waldeboro book that uh, Rug Hooking Magazine put out. Um, I haven't done a video on Waldeboro yet, but this is not completely dissimilar than Waldeboro rugs because you're shaping. So if you come in close and look at what I need to do to get things right here, I'm not just trimming things that are too long like this stuff. Hands out of the way. I'm all, okay. I'm trying to also shape it. I shape as I go. So like this one, I'm shaping the eyes so that they're lower on the sides and they're higher in the middle. And I'm going to clean it all up later, but you can see with a project like this, whatever your design is, you're going to end up shaping with your scissors, just regular scissors. I don't, I don't own fancy scissors. And if I did, they're ruined a long time ago. So I shape as I go, I shape the edges, I make some parts shorter, some parts longer, but this is according to my taste and what I want. That's why this eye looks bigger and that eye looks smaller, as I haven't shaped this part yet. But I will shape as I go. This one's almost like, it's hard to see, but dome-like, because I went down on the sides like, I just gave Teddy a haircut this morning too, so this is real reminiscent of that, with the same scissors, I might add. But... Um, yeah, I shape it down as I go, and it ends up popping this eye a little bit, and this eye will end up looking the same. I'm going to also do that to the nose. Took out the white teeth because they looked bizarre. These are things just like with hooking or punch. You figure it out as you go along. But again, the thing that makes this rug special, I think, is the fancy fiber. And if you're going to do latch and you like the look of this, like it's real whimsical. It's a bit 90s, the color scheme that I have going anyway. But it's a lot, it's a lot of fun, and it's something different. Uh, it's not something you can do on your lap as easily because you really need the flat surface to work on. But um, Jay is making a bunch of kidney things anyway, right, that you can put on your lap just the plain wood and, and do this, and it's absolutely perfect. But with this, it's, a, it's just the latch, which is very simple motion, and it's the shaping when you get to a point where you feel like you want to make something a bit more refined. Uh, and it's searching for fabrics that you think you can love and use and mix in and the main thing about this that I find different and interesting is one of them is the height, being able to make that kind of height and the variation of height um, and to be able to change it as you go. That's the thing. Being able to, after I finish this whole part, do my searching for a tick in the dog thing and look for some more places to add some more of this stuff when I think I'm done, still adding a bit more or saying this part is done, but there's always going to be room to add a little bit more of something in there. If you feel like as it comes together as a whole, you think, oh, I'm missing this or I'm missing that, I'm missing texture, I'm missing height, I'm missing softness, I'm missing sparkle. 
whatever you're missing with with this craft form you can add it really easily so that is a huge thumbs up for me uh, for latch the things i like about it creativity height it just looks different the one thing that is trickier with it for me is the way that you work on a flat surface and unless you're sitting at a table for me i'm a big couch person with my hooking and punching this isn't something you can really do on the couch so what a small thing but for me it is a big thing because it means i have to be set up in certain places at certain times it's not a huge drawback and it shouldn't stop you from trying it because this has been a lot of fun it is taking more time than i thought we've got a lot to do this weekend we've got a lot of other projects and announcements going so um, i'm going to stop the video um, right after this to release this because i had another 3 14 a.m brainstorm about how to finish uh, this latch drug in a way that is sort of industrial, sort of folky, very easy and very cool. So I will do a part two of this video where you will see it finished. And in that video, I'll be finishing the edges in a really cool way that you can use that will translate also to your hooking and your punching, not just latch. So for now, this was an introduction to latch. I hope you enjoyed it. Something different, something fun, taking an old craft and turning it into something new and special what a great idea for making kits for people you love. I'm going to be definitely putting together some latch kits with different designs, some abstract designs too, um, using tons of fancy fibers and regular yarns. That's another huge plus to latch. You're not blocking it, so you're not steaming it. You're never applying heat to it. And for that reason, you can go to Joann's and Michael's and hoard um, all the acrylic yarns to use in the background, particularly if you're using other yarns with them. Um, they won't come out so um, acrylic-y and lackluster. They would, you'd be able to pop them a lot better, and there's no reason to not use those inexpensive yarns because you're using a lot with latch hooks. But I will be putting together some kits with different themes and lots of fun fibers, and I hope that this has given you some ideas for some of your original latch kits. And get your kids going on it. Get your grandkids going on it. Get your nieces and nephews. It's something fun. Start with a blank and start with a painting. Don't understand what you're saying. Sorry. But I will see you soon, and goodbye from Ribbon Candy Hooking. Got what Jay was trying to say? Comment. Please comment if you watch these videos. I can see that there's thousands and thousands of people watching. It means a lot to me in terms of YouTube for people to be able to find me and for my channel to become more legit and um, important because um, I spend a lot of time doing this stuff. If you would comment, like, subscribe, share, anything you can do with this YouTube link, it helps me a lot. It makes me a lot more visible and it helps other people find me too. Makes it seem like doing this stuff is a, is a bit worthwhile. Thank you so much. See you soon.